So that's the truth, right? You can give me your username on Twitter, but if you're not here when the show starts, there is nothing I can do for you in that regard. He plays Knight to C6. We'll talk about why I don't like this approach by Comfy Snake in a minute. Um, but this is interesting. Maybe he castles long. Wow. He's playing fast, right? That's for sure. That's part of his strategery right now. And I'm going to bring this queen out to b5. The d5 pawn is hanging. If he forgets about it, I will, uh, I will take it. And uh, he does forget about it, but he creates a little bit of counterplay. So we'll cackle first. Defend that pawn. Okay. Strange position indeed, but positionally we like white's chances because of the doubled isolated pawns over here. Um, you know, closed center equals bad bishop here. I'm going to go after that f6 pawn because it seemed like a fancy thing to do. Uh, now there could be a threat of bishop coming there, so I'm actually going to trade off that light square bishop. d5 pawn could be hanging once again, and I'll back up. My knight on the rim would be grim, and it looks like he's going to make me trade it anyway. I was going to say it would be grim, but it's actually causing some dysfunction to his position. Although right now I feel like I need to speed up a little bit. All this talking about the position has got me in a a little bit of a time disadvantage, doesn't it? Got to be careful here. But here go all the pawns. One pawn after another is dropping. And uh, that's going to that's gonna let us get a queen. That's a rook. We'll pre-move a check just for kicks and gigs. And we'll pre-move another check. From No, we'll pre-move this check. I love pre-moving. It's like the invention of pre-moving is the coolest thing that happened to chess since the invention of the bell. Thank you. Come again. All right, we got uh, username Hanaka D. I guess maybe there are more people who've challenged me here than I recognize. So I'm going to decline some people who did not give me their username on Twitter only because I want the followers to be happy. It's nothing against everybody else. I just, you know, I feel like if I say I'm going to do something, I have to stick to it. Wow, a lot, a lot more people waiting for challenges than I thought. So uh, I'm going to decline some people. Chess Gamer Tag, you already played. There you go, Hanaka. Thank you for following me on Twitter. Oh, the tank. That was you, man. I'll accept you next, buddy. I'll accept you next. Sicilian, and I helped. Right, what you didn't know is I put the poison using the oldest trick in the book. The Sicilian. I told you guys I let my kids watch that, right? Hilarious. My six-year-old is so awesome. He's got, like, the best sense of humor. I mean, not that my nine-year-old isn't awesome, too. He's just, like, six-year-old's just hilarious. Gets it. You know what I mean? He just gets it. He just gets the humor, right? I feel like in another in another life, he would have been a, a, one of the stooges, a three stooge, you know? But, like, intelligent slapstick humor. Like, he gets it. He gets what's funny. You know? You know what I'm talking about. All right, I'm going to sack on B2 and then bring the hammer down. This is actually a really common uh, pattern to be aware of in the dragon, this idea where the queen then comes and gives check. Then you take on uh, C3. The knight falls because there's no way to defend it. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll... Maybe we'll ring the bell again in this game. We've had two bells in a row. Ah, uh, no, a resignation. But let's back up and learn something about this because what Hanaka did here was played a normal open Sicilian that a lot of you probably get on a regular basis, right? Um, this is a Yugoslav attack with early G4 in a position without the queen being on D2. Uh, it's po possible I could already play D5 in some of these weird positions. You have to be careful. You don't want to play d5 and allow g5, because if the knight has to move, they might just gobble up this pawn. And um, Excuse me. What's interesting is in some of these positions, you might even go for it, you know, and just give up the pawn just to try to open up counterplay. So I'm, I, don't, I don't know. These early g4 lines are definitely more play playable after queen d2, knight c6, and g4, which we ended up transposing to anyway. Um, here, d5 is definitely a mistake. Um, and what's the major difference? I think white just takes with the pawn. And uh, rather than the knight, 
where where the the D file is still a little more fluid could be opened up a little faster for black. But okay, like I think either in either case, uh, white is probably fine. I'm not going to play D5 and allow you to win the pawn, but you have to be careful because what you're neglecting tactically, even if you had played Queen D2 and gone into the main line, is okay. You're neglecting castling which uh, is, okay, in terms of chess basics, right, we know there are potential consequences to that. Um, and uh, you are neglecting, uh, you know, sometimes there's tactics early and often on these pawns when you advance there early. So something to be aware of. But again, let's, uh, let's look at what happened because really the biggest mistake from Hanaka's perspective was that he took on c6. It, you know, Bullet or not, you have to try to play the openings the way that you know to play them, even if it took a little more time. That's how you build those muscles and eventually kind of push up your own ceiling. People ask how to get better at these at these rapid time controls, where you have to still just try to play the best moves that you know, and just try to play them as fast as you can. And if you don't know them, then learn them better so you can play them faster. Um, but you don't want to play bad moves, necessarily. I know you would say, well, doesn't Nakamura play B3 every time he plays Blitz and Bullet? Well, Hikaru is one of those guys who's good enough to probably pretty much play anything. And so his overall chess knowledge, especially against the level of competition he's playing, is something that he kind of judges. And maybe he doesn't want to use opening prep. But also, Hikaru loses some games. I mean, you know, sometimes you get in bad positions out of the opening, and he probably wishes he just played mainline theory. So, um, anyway... Uh, Taking on c6 opens the b file, and when you cast along, I'm immediately looking at ideas on b2. So you guys should look at this pattern the same way I do, where I just immediately smell blood. You know, and, and tactically, you want to become a great white, which means when there's blood in the water, you smell it, and you may not necessarily see the prey, but you're immediately aware of, of what's going on here. And so the more patterns you learn, the more powerful you are, right? And... Um, and he kind of just walks right into it by forcing my knight to move. I was already considering ideas like this, honestly. If he had done something, I didn't say it out loud, but I was considering ideas like takes, takes, check, he moves, and then knight takes e4. Just to give you an idea of how powerful the tactical patterns are here. Because, again, like if he takes with the knight, that's checkmate on b2. If he takes with the pawn, I take here. If he moves the queen, I take on c3. So rook takes b2 was being threatened in this position already and he played g5 and just kind of so i didn't even go for it because i think he'll take f6 and what's the point right so i just moved the knight and i'm immediately threatening this so i just wanted to point out that pattern and why you want to know it so first person i'm going to play next was the last person who tweeted at me the tank welcome to the show the tank the tank right have you guys ever seen uh one of the most underrated animated movies of all time i know i watch too many animated movies with the kids i've heard okay but sometimes on a, on a Saturday morning when you're slightly hungover, right, and your kids want to cuddle up in bed with you, you just turn on some tunes, and right, it's like, you know, when you're slightly recovering from yesterday's performance, if we're talking, I don't want to use the word hangover in case there's some young ones here, but you're slightly suffering from yesterday's performance, you pop a little English muffin in the toaster, right, and then you pop it up, put some peanut butter on it, then you drop a little bit of honey, like that, right, you mix it around the honey, have you ever had English muffin, honey, peanut butter, it's like, it's like, Best hangover cure ever had. If you've never had that, seriously, I just gave you a pro tip. English muffin, peanut butter, honey. You take the honey, right? You just smear it over here. Um, ooh, nice. Yeah, yeah, right. So I'm playing the tank, the tankster. Tank town, population him. Anyway, what was I talking about before I got off on my uh, English accented English uh, muffin which wasn't a wasn't my best English accent. I'm feeling a little tired today. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I know you don't want to hear excuses. You want results, and I believe in that. You know, I like I like that you guys hold me to a high standard, um, as you as you judge me on YouTube. You know, um, but anyway, I love that you guys hold me to a high standard. So I'm not going to make excuses, but I am a little. You know, it's not the first thing to go when I'm feeling a little under the weather is like my accent ability. Before my chess skills go, my accent abilities go. Um, anyway, so surfs up with the with the tank. Uh, I forget the guy that does the voice of the tank, but it's hilarious. I recommend surfs up. Shia LaBeouf, uh, Shia LaBeouf before he went crazy in uh, in a in a movie that's about penguins who surf. Just awesome. Recommend it. Jeff Bridges, Shia LaBeouf, Zoe Deschanel animated movie with penguins a lot of great mature humor i recommend surfs up to everybody out there 
Next, I'm going to take on the next person who tweeted at me and sent me a personal message here on chess.com. At least I thought he did. No, he didn't. I don't see him anymore on my on my to-do list here, on my player to-do list. So we're just going to take on the next guy whose name I do not know. I, d I do not know his name. LOL, right? You see what I did there? LOL. That's actually a new funny thing you can do at parties where someone says something that's not funny. You just go LOL and you see if they buy it because most of the time when someone says LOL in a text message, are they la actually laughing out loud? Most of the time not, right? So, um, so just say LOL in a party. All right, that's it. We're doing it. We're taking on somebody else. The bullet simul. That guy baited me into it. You see that? That guy baited me into the bullet simul. I do not know. He waited until he knew I would take on somebody else. So look at that. Now we have the bullet simul. Oh, that's a Chekalina Lashlamba. Actually, no, it's not Chekalina Lashlamba, which is Russian for checkmate. It's um, it's actually just a uh, win of a piece. Somehow I have an... Oh, it's an increment game going. I'm actually okay with that. As far as a bullet simul goes, that was an accident. Accepted an increment game, but I will take it. I will take it to the bank because now I, uh, I have a little bit more time than I normally would in this kind of simul, right? Uh, I have to be careful here. This guy knows what he's doing. He knows it's a simul. I'm telling you, I do not know. He knows, all right? I know his username is like, I do not know, but dude knows. I can feel it. I can feel that he knows what's going on here. Um, he's playing fast. He knows I'm multitasking. Uh, okay, we're going to come in and we're going to pop a pawn into E6. We're popping pawns today. Popping pawns. That's how you open up files. That's how you open up files. Boom. We're popping pawns. Let's put that rook on C4. Let's take that guy. Oop, the queen was hanging. Didn't even see that, but we'll shake and bake. We will shake and bake. Uh, we'll move the queen. What the bejesus. Sweet. I want on time. That is nice. Uh, let's just let's just offer. Nah. Let's let's checkmate. Why offer a queen trade when you could go for checkmate? Right. Hmm. Push now. Open up f3. We'll push d2. We'll push again. Now I see what he's doing. He wants to take advantage of my pinned pony. Well, you know how I feel about that? You know, taking advantage of my knight like that. You better buy me dinner first. You know? Uh, is he even threatening anything? Uh, wait, the queen is hanging. That's a problem for him. It's a slight problem. Okay. Well, that was fun. The full, the first uh, bullet simul of the day. What else is going on here? Do we got uh, what kind of players we got waiting for us? A long list. Long list. I should probably check over to the Twitter feed and see who's who's barking me, barking at me with their username. All right, Kingly Bingley. I see you, Kingly Bingley, on Twitter, but I don't see your name in my. Oh, I do. There you are, man. Welcome, welcome, Kingly Bingley. I love that. You know how I feel about rhyming. You know? That's the uh, Blackmar Demar Gambit, FYI. We'll talk about how to take down the Blackmar Demar Gambit in just a second. You see how I do that? It, like, keeps everybody hanging. It's a trick I'm learning in the broadcasting school that I'm not attending. Um, oops, that was a bad move by me. He should have definitely played... Uh, should have definitely played Knight E4 because they had a threat of Queen H4 check. But we'll talk about the key to taking down these gambits. Uh, which isn't necessarily what my opponent did here. But now he's confused by all the tactics going on. Decides to settle on taking with the bishop. Probably not the most effective approach. And I will I will begin to perform surgery here on these dark squares. I'm like a surgeon with this. What movie is that? That I just did the PG version of it. Don't mess with me. I'm a surgeon with this. Insert. Who said that? Who said that? Hashtag Denzel. Denzel. I bet Denzel Washington is out there and doesn't even know that he's being referenced on a chess show. I bet he, I bet that I bet that's happening somewhere in the world. <laughs> right? I just that was funny because of course it's happening, because of course he doesn't know that he's being referenced on a chess show. Denzel. Denzel doesn't even know, does he? 
Dude doesn't even know. I'm going to take there first, and I've got a really fun threat. Yes, he didn't see it. I took with all the pins in town. That's a lot of pins. We're going to take there, and are we going to ring the bell? We're going to ring the bell. Boom. Thank you. Come again. We love it. You love it. Everybody loves it. But let's actually learn something about this game. Because um, the Blackmore Demore Gambit is probably something that y'all... Uh, that y'all face a little more than I do. It's a it's a popular gambit, not at the highest levels of chess because it gives up a center pawn. It's not not the most uh, not the best idea in the world, but you know it's featured in rapid chess from time to time. Obviously, the intentions are clear. You're opening up the light squares with uh, reckless abandonment, and you you know you want to you want to attack this pawn. And after knight f six and f three, what he should do is just gobble up the pawn. He, he get he didn't want to do that, but the key to taking on these center gambits is, although not the same exact move, I'm going to give you some universal knowledge right now. It's the same, it's the same um, strategical concept behind how you play against e4 gambits. What I mean by that is in e4 gambits, for example, e4 king's gambits, what have I told everybody before? The most common theme when your opponent is sacrificing pawns for a lead in development, that sort of accelerated romantic style chess game, and they want to check you in the middle, checkmate you in the middle of the board, what you want to do is open the center and equalize in terms of the activity, specifically with d5. d5 is like the universal strike that you'll notice is like the theoretically best move against so many of these gambits. So um, it's actually the most popular move here, d5 and then knight f6, and sometimes they even sack a pawn again. But black is black is strategically equalizing in terms of the initiative, and then um, the positional repercussions of this gambit, which were opening the f-pawn, opening the dark squares, those become more of a factor in the game. And that's not me just blowing smoke because I like the uh, d5 line against the king's gambit. Let's go with the scotch gambit. Is it is there is it a coincidence that in the Scotch Gambit after Knight f6 e5 the theoretically most important move here is d5? Again, you strike in the center, equalize. If they keep gobbling, you keep gobbling, and and the open position is is equal, probably a little better for Black. So White plays Bishop to b5 in the main lines, and we get a main line uh, Scotch Gambit, or um. Sometimes it's just like the regular Scotch game people consider it. Uh, even against like the Italian game where white is doing, you know, more traditional, let's say like bishop c5, like more traditional Gioco pianos. Is is it a coincidence that once again the most theoretically like popular move is, is these days not to go gobble this pawn and give white all these crazy attacks, but to play what? Ding, 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 d5. I feel like I should ring the bell just for that. So that universal strike is actually similar to what you should be applying against these d4 gambits, which is a black mar demar here. You should be taking the pawn and then looking to do what, based on what I just said. You should be looking to, to open up with, like, like, what do you want to open up? I'm trying to ask the question to let people who are really engaged in learning in these shows and aren't just here to rip on me and leave a, leave a mean-spirited YouTube comment. Yeah, I'm talking to you, silly man1234. I don't even know if that's a username, but if it is, I just totally just called that guy out. Stop leaving mean comments on YouTube. You know, go be somebody. No, I'm kidding. The, the the positional idea is to, of course, strike and open in the dark squares. It's not D5 because you've already played D5. But often the most simple thing to do is just play E6, where a lot of people get in trouble is they play things like Bishop here, and then sometimes they try to play solid and miss tactics that occur because the position is open, and it's like, bam, slam, thank you, ma'am. You know what I'm talking about? Um... So that's not good. In fact, I might even get away with a little tickle here and say, oh, take my queen. Oh, pfft, right. Pfft. Um, but no, of course, you just you don't even need the development of the uh, of the bishop. Just play e6 and then like next move, just play c5. And immediately you're equalizing in the center. You're opening up as far as the activity. So you're trying to equalize in terms of activity. And it makes White's job really hard because now I can't just sit here and focus on checkmate when you're going to trade and just start trading all the minor pieces in the center. And, and that's no fun for me. So that's the best way to deal with that. Somebody's buzzing me on the phone. It's like, don't they know that I'm in a show right now? They don't, don't they know that I'm in a show right now? All right. Um, so anyway, there you go. There's your pro tip against the Blackmore Demar Gambit. We got more people coming in on Twitter. Uh, M. Biancuzo. M. Biancuzo. That's a little weird. We got Flight Plan 2014. Let me see if I can find you, peeps. There you are, Flight Plan. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the party. 
Welcome to the show. Welcome to the flight plan. How is your flight plan treating you, right? You want a, you want a good trajectory here? Or you, you need a travel agent? I don't know. Oh, the F3 Nimzo. Say what? Um, wait, I'm supposed to play the D5 line. Uh, yeah, th I don't like this line. <laughs> I don't like this line that I'm playing. Uh, that's not fun. So now I'm going to do something weird. I don't, I, I, I like D5 line against F3. But okay, White gets a big center here. I'm just going to have to pick it apart. Know what I mean? I'm just going to have to do what I do best, all right? It ain't, it ain't always pretty, but you got to get the job done. It's like you got to cowboy up or shut up. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. It ain't your, it ain't your first rodeo either. Look, I'm going to do right here. I'm going to take on E4, and I'm going to give a check right here on H4, and I'm going to love it. I love it. I love it when you give me checks, Billy Bob. I love the way you give those checks, Bob. I ever told you that? I love the way you check me. I'm going to get you right here. I'm going to take it. Oh, he's going to get out of the center because he's nervous. He's like, I don't like what you're playing in there, Danny. I feel like you being mischievous or up to something no good, like a, like a strategy or something. You take that strategy back to the city, Billy Bob. I ain't even I ain't even gonna play if you're gonna keep strategizing stuff. I ain't gonna do it. All right, I'm gonna put my rook on b8. I'm gonna go attack b2 because that's an open line. Ooh, that's a dark square right there. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take a dark square right here. Pop in. Ooh, nice. I'm gonna back up. Maybe I'll go check me on h2. Oh, I have a, I have a fun idea. I have a super fun idea. Oh, yes! I set up a bell ring. Boom! Thank you. Come again. I, I saw, I saw the checkmate pattern. I said, you know what the people want? The people want me to ring the bell. That's what they want. Is uh. Is uh, is the stream still going? I just got a technical word. I just got a technical word that the stream may be paused. Maybe it's glitchy. Is that true, or do or are we live? Can someone give me some feedback real quick? Appreciation, homie. You will get. Yeah, the uh, the stream is still going. Okay, I don't know why. Someone just gave me a, uh, a hey, right, you might not be live. Okay, right, we'll keep going here. All right, Pure Defiance, I see you. Stop yelling. We get it, all right? Not your first show, though, okay? I played you before. That's why I can't always give you the same kind of attention. I'm trying to bring in some new peeps here, all right? All right. Oh, yeah, here comes the B pawn. I'm going to push that pawn. I'm going to push that pawn. Pawn's got to be pushed. Ooh, I should have taken with the A pawn. <laughs> and then he should have taken. We both we both played uh We both played bad moves. That's what happened. I'm going to go get the D3 pawn. A lot of bad moves being played in this game by both sides actually. A lot of bad moves here. <laughs> I didn't play my best. I'm going to go put a bishop on C2 though. Oop, I guess I'll just take here. I guess I'll just take. I'll take again. Uh, I'm going to defend both with one pawn move. One pawn, two pieces, three tacos. You do the math. Ooh. Ooh. There's so many options, not enough time. I'm going to go there. So many options. Let's overload the queen. Let's get that queen overloaded, shall we? And then go pick up a pony. We're picking up ponies tonight. And then we have this little intermezzo where he, oh, he can't take the rook, but he did. I was saying I had a little intermezzo, which prevented him from taking my rook, but he didn't hear me in time. That's what happens when you're listening to the stream and trying to get good moves. Now I got the Venus flytrap. Look at this. Now I got the Venus flytrap. It's coming, homie. Boom, 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 boom. Sure, I'll ring the bell. <laughs> All right. He wants me to ring the bell. Boom. Only a checkmate, and only for our best customers. He's one of my best customers, that pure defiance guy. All right, let's go get let's go get some chess against a. Uh, oh, there's another one who followed me on Twitter and uh, actually sent me a personal message here on Chess.com. So I'm gonna let him play, and then I'm gonna go find me a title player. I'm gonna go wrestle me a bear, right? 
X-Ray LX, you wanted a shout out. You want attention in the Twitch chat. Well, there you go. You get it. Danny, let your beard go. Every good chess player has a large beard. That is completely false, good sir. Every mountain man has a large beard. Every Grizzly Adams wannabe has a large beard, but not every chess player has a large beard. However, I do appreciate the uh, the request. Um, anyway, there you go, X-Ray LX. You get your shout-out. Ooh, do I take? No, I'll just back up. I'll go get that pawn later. Augusta, save some room for later. Right? Oops, I just blundered a piece. I just blundered a piece. He's going to take F8 and uh, see if I take him back. He had Queen C3 check. My first game where I'm losing and I'm down on time. This could be bad, everybody. Bad things could happen here. Or not. I got to play fast. But this time, I'm actually down on, uh, on the position. Which is, which is a rarity. So I have to be very careful. Although I'm hoping that he's on his way to Blunderville. He might be on his way to Blunderville right now, taking the taking the next train to Blundertown. Let's hope my opponent hops on the next train to Blundertown, gets his king in trouble. Let's get that king on g3 and see if we can make something magical happen. Check. And pick up the bishop. That's magical enough for me. We are back in business here, people. Oh, check town. Should we ring the bell? Let's ring the bell. Check. And mate. Yeah, that took a little bit of a comeback. Luckily, my opponent hopped on the train to Blundertown. Oh, man. Good game, buddy. Good game. All right, I'm going to go wrestle me a bear. I'm going to go find me a title player. I'm going to get me a, uh, a gong match going. Lots of great guys. Lots of great people challenging. Lots of great followers on Twitter. All right, Mbiako, because you just followed me just to make that challenge and give me your username. I'm going to give you some love before I move on. I'm going to give you some love here, buddy. Let's put that pony on d5 and transpose into a Sveshnikov. Let's talk about the importance of transpositions next and the knowledge of them. I want to give everybody a lesson on that because I'm really in the teaching mode today. I don't want to just play here. I want to give some instructional value. Ooh, that could be fun. That could get real, real nice. Danny, you're so nice when you're playing a bull brawl. It's like you're just, you're just so nice. I'm going to keep attacking here, Jim Bob. Go get me a checkmate. Lack of development is hurting Black's position here. Uh, we'll go we'll go sack town on H6 if he lets us. Or we'll just ring the bell. All right, everybody. Um, seriously, though, uh, what what's going on in, in this position when I reference that transposition is, uh, okay, well, he just pre-moved that. I've tried to play like a Smith more, and he just pre-moved it. So we'll pretend that we just had a normal Sicilian with knight f3, knight c6, and then d4, because we just transposed. Again, that's another way to play transpos to, to say transposition. But a transposition, uh, obviously, we're all smart enough here to probably, you know, just hear the word and, and guess the definition, is when you reach, when you reach a position um, that, uh, that you normally reach through another move order right so you're 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 transposing from one uh line into another and uh so you're transposing from what would be a Taimanov sicilian into a sveshnikov sicilian here you're transposing from a, a rui lopez into what's more of an italian game or whatever transpositions most of the time happen without anything really critical changing in the position um that's because most of the time they just happen through someone trying a different move order. Like, you know, someone plays knight f3, the other guy plays d5, white plays c4, you know, like a ready, black plays c6, and then white plays d4, and we're in a mainline semi-slav. How does that normally occur? d4, d4, d5, c4, c6, knight f3. So we reach that move order with knight f3, c4 ready first, and then we transposed do the other way. So I just want to give the definition first. But beyond just knowing the definition of a transposition, why is it important that you understand the possible transpositions that could occur in your opening lines? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, baby birds, I'm going to feed you. 
All right. The reason is it prevents you from being tricked when you're aware of move orders. And two things. One, it prevents you from being tricked. When your opponent plays a move order that you may not necessarily be familiar with, you don't freak out first assuming uh, that you're now in a completely different opening when there's actually still opportunities to transpose the position into something you're more comfortable with. So that's why knowing the pawn structure you play and knowing what the development schemes are and understanding the position is just as important as knowing the memorization of the opening moves. And somebody on the last Title Tuesday who actually got a premium membership asked this question. So he's probably not here right now. But if he was, he'd be getting some more free uh, chess knowledge. Um... But the basic thing is that the transposition that happens uh, through move orders will throw you off if you don't have a greater understanding of the whys behind your move, of the development schemes and patterns and of the, you know, the pawn formations than you do of just like the encyclopedia and what it said. So it prevents you from being thrown off. The, the, second, thing, um, the second thing is... It also, uh, it also gives you chances to trick your opponent just by playing weird moves. You know, um, sometimes like a funny thing is like sometimes they play E4 against a person who plays the Sicilian. And if they know that he's like a mainline dragon player, which occurs with knight F3, D6, D4, takes, takes, knight F6, knight here, G6. This is a mainline dragon, right? If white plays E4, C5, knight E2, and that person gets thrown off and tries to play like e6, thinking this person is only going to play knight, you know, maybe knight c3 and knight c6 and then d3 and play like a close Sicilian. And then white plays a move uh, d4. Well, now obviously the best move is to take it. And after knight takes, guess what we're in? We're in a Paulson or Timon of Sicilian or a Khan Sicilian, not in a Dragon Sicilian anymore, right? We're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. That's the point. So knowing transpositions prevents you from being tricked and it gives you the ability to trick your opponent. Um, and also in studying, actually in this particular line, the transposition is important in terms of database uh, building because did you know that this position here, this position right here that, no, that my, my opponents was supposed to play with move d6, bishop f4, e5, bishop g5. Take a picture of this position. It occurs on move 8. You can count the moves. Because of the move bishop f4 was move 7 and bishop g5. This position is occurring on move 8 right now. Well... Let me know if you recognize that position when I do it like this instead. E5 here, here, here. Exact same position, but it now occurs on move 7. And this, this transposition from the Taimonov to the Sveshnikov that, just, that could have occurred in our game because my opponent played E6 and then D6 and you waste this tempo to get the same position actually changed the way that Chessbase, the big database company, was building their software because if people were searching this position on move 8, they weren't getting the same games as on move 7 which obviously makes no sense because it's like the same position and you want to know what people who played in it in both lines were. So they actually had to make their software a little more intuitive. That's just like a fun history lesson about chess software and another thing about transpositions. So there you go. All right, let's, uh, let's go, let's go wrestle me a bear. Wrestle me a bear. Hey, you gonna wrestle a bear, you better take a, you better take some with you like a knife. That's not a knife. Oh, there we go. There we go. We got our first title player. Welcome. Welcome, title player who challenged me, Mr. Tic-Tac-Toe, Billy Joel, Fide Master, too. A little bit lower rated, but a Fide Master, and these days I've been dropping below 2,600. You guys remember when not long ago I was above 2,600? What happened to those days? Remember? It was only yesterday, yesterday. All my troubles seem so far away, and I don't know the words to that song but i believe in yesterday so uh some time why do you have to go away the uh, yesterday yesterday all my troubles seem so far away Mm boo do do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh wait, is he winning a piece? What in the world? I tell you what, that made no sense to me. All right, I like. I was pretty sure I was winning a pawn or something, and then it's like, hey, hey, what happened? Suddenly, I'm not half the man I used to be. 
Now, uh, Gloomka the Great, who just loves ripping on me, is telling me to, to stop stop singing. I get it, buddy. Hey, I know you're jealous. I get it. I know. Miss my calling, right? Hey, I'm not going to quit my day job, everybody. Don't worry. I get it. Insert joke about somebody who has a bad singing voice. You know, there's a lot of them. Uh, I guess I'll push there. I don't have a lot of time to commit this particular crime here, do I? Wait, I'm a... Wait, uh, it's checkmate. Ah! I have to play a bad move, and I'm going to lose on time. Suddenly, I'm not half the man I used to be. Boom. He didn't see I had a discovery on his queen, did he? That's how you roll it. That's how you roll it. That's how you roll it. That's how you do it. Let's get this uh let's get this best of five party started with a two oh sweep, shall we? Yeah, I'm aware that I won a position I had no business winning. Now ask me if I feel bad. What's that? I can't hear you, right? Partly because I'm broadcasting to the self to, to myself. Theoretically I'm broadcasting to myself right now, right? I mean I'm I'm doing it for you. But yeah, I get it. I get it. Oh, I meant to play D6, a mouse slip. Mouse slip. <laughs> you know when you you blunder, but it wasn't actually a mouse slip, and you say mouse slip because it's kind of a mouse slip? Oh, gosh, my position is horrible now. <laughs> what am I going to do? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's not fair, is it? Right. Not really. I don't even, I don't even know what to do. Like, I meant to play d6, and then the position is fine. So it's, like, not really a mouse slip. It's just kind of a mouse slip, because you put a piece on a square you didn't mean to. But it wasn't like you actually slipped. You just you just played like an idiot. I like to say that when I mouse slip, even when I play like an idiot, I just like to call it a mouse slip. You know what I mean? You get it. You get it. Ooh, I should have taken the knight, maybe. Oh, and then his bishop would have been hanging. That would have been sweet, actually. That would have been a surprisingly good decision, possibly. That would have been... I didn't even think about that till after the fact. But we'll go with it. We'll go with this horribly played game and hopefully take a victory surviving an opening with a <clears throat> mouse slip, right? All right, defend threats. That's the first key to happiness in life. What's going on? Uh, queen trade? Queen trade? No. Uh -huh. No. Okay. There's a shadow hanging over me. Oh, I believe in yesterday. And what's the deal with Paul McCartney, who's all mad that, like, John Lennon gets all the credit for their songs? I mean, dude's dead, all right? Let it go, right? You know what I'm talking about? I mean, I get it. It's like these days, like, he claims he cares that, you know, he gets listed first on Beatles songs before John Lennon for songs that they co-wrote. You know, I get it. But it's just like, what are you doing, man? No one even, no one's even worried about it anymore. Oh, I only had one second? Man, Danny, focus. I almost lost on time. <laughs> uh, that was that would have been bad. I thought I, I thought I was way up on time. I had no idea I was about to lose on time. But let's uh let's take a best of five here and bang that gong, shall we? Any best of five victory against a title player, that gets a gong bang. Let's let's get the best of five. Let's take a 3 0 sweep into the next round and get find ourselves another bar. Let's go wrestle ourselves in another bear. Um, I forget what I'm supposed to do here. I think... I don't remember. I don't remember. I know this is a line in the pan of Bud Vinick, but this is... Some guy asked me today why I don't play FIDE rated tournaments anymore. You know, because I'm busy and I suck. That's why. No, I just... I don't have the time. Cackle think I have a better position. I'm kind of up a pawn. I mean, not really up a pawn, but kind of up a pawn because, uh, you know, because of the situation around, uh, around his double pawns here. 
So I'm kind of up a pawn, right? Oops, not anymore. I'm kind of not going to be up a pawn anymore, am I? Hmm. How can I swindle something here? Swindle time. Swindle time. Uh, I'll try to take advantage of his lack of development, but it doesn't seem... Doesn't seem like the most concrete way to grab a victory, but I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with it. See if I can get that bishop trapped in the middle of the board. I did it. He blundered and I did it. Shake and bake, homie. Shake and bake and I helped. Take there. Take with check. Seems good enough. Can't go to the king and pawn ending because he will be easily lost, and he's aware of that as well. And that's a rook. Gong time. Gong time. We grab it. Somebody said, hey, Danny, you should do funnier stuff on your show. You know, and then somebody else on YouTube said, hey, Danny, your show is really annoying. And I agreed with both of them. Isn't that weird? I got the gong to try to do more funny stuff, and I also told the guy who told me I was really annoying that I agreed with him. So I get it, you know? That's just me trying to keep everybody happy. Don't worry about it. All right. Who else we got here? Who else we got here? We got a lot of names, a lot of people, a lot of challenges. What I'm looking for right now is another title player. One more to bring our, our 60 minutes home, shall we? All right, let's go find ourselves a title player, shall we? Let's go wrestle ourselves a bear. Um, hmm. Where are they at? Where are they at? We got Yaakov N. Let's see if Yaakov wants a piece of this. Yaakov normally does want a piece of this. He's, uh, he's normally a fan of, of ripping me apart limb from limb. Right? Yakov doesn't shy away from a challenge, that guy. Ooh, Finzo905. Is he, is he giving lessons? Ah, he's busy. He's busy. Bartholomew's busy. Hashtag too bad. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, we got somebody. AMS, ASMS969. And he's really good. Let's do it. Time to focus on... Focus on the show. Focus on the results. Focus on the results. Focus on the show. There's a shadow hanging over me. Oh, I believe in yesterday. Why did you... Have to go, I don't know. She wouldn't say, or something like that, right? I said, something wrong, how I long for yesterday. I'm doing my best to play chess right now, in case you're wondering what I'm doing. I'm trying to play chess. Why? I kind of like this big majority I got going here. I'm going to take there. Yeah. Yeah, right. Take it all here. Oh, really? That's not ideal for him, is it? I don't think so. Maybe it is. I do like my active king. I guess I'll take and go get that pawn. Why not? Aren't there multiple ways to gobble up that pawn? But let's just play a safe move. And say, no soup for you. Uh, we'll take there, and then we'll take there. Why would she have to go? I don't know. This is a weird... I don't know how this happened. This got... Oh my gosh, I just... Ah! This just got really bad. I just I just blew that I just blew that game. Big time. Huh. Hmm. 
No one quite knows why I played so badly there, but I did. I sense something wrong. Well. Check. I'll just take the draw. Just take the draw, man. I'm lost. I'm lost and I know it. This isn't searching for Bobby Fisher where you're lost and you just don't know it. This is I'm lost and I know it. So I'm taking that draw. I don't know how I say I mean, I, that was a horrible game for me. So the uh, best of five round two, not off to the best start. But let's see if I can pick it up. See if I can pick up the game. See if I can pick up the game. Remember, we're playing 1-1 one, one here, so I need to make sure I maintain a higher quality of moves than might normally be my, my preference. You know my preference. Bad moves, play fast, you get it. That's normally my thing. I'm like the, I'm like the guy who plays bad moves and plays fast. But, um, but in seriousness, I... Um, uh, is he going to do that? He might. So we'll do something weird here. Uh, so against my normally better judgment, I'm going to try to play better moves if I'm capable of doing so. Need to play some solid chess. We need to try and play some solid chess here. Uh, we'll take everything and offer the trade. Why not? I can take with the rook now. Right? I guess so. Ah, I see. That was stupid of me. Darn it. Okay, well, I have to do this. Have to do that. Yesterday, I'm still playing bad chess all the way. Not my best performance of the day. But I'm gonna try to draw the ending anyway. Gonna try to draw the ending anyway. Should be a draw, especially with the time that we both have. Especially with the time. Oh my gosh, not after that. <sighs> I hate when I play bad chess. Like, it just gets to me, you know? It just really, really gets to me. For some reason. Trying to do weird stuff here just for kicks and gigs. But I'm lost. I'm just trying to get the nerves out. I'm, I'm playing bad right here, so I just want to, you know, Okay, I'm just going to resign. It's 1-1. One, one. He's got plenty of time to figure this out. He's got plenty of time to figure it out. And I got plenty of time to try to play some better chess. So let's all calm down, take a breath, and see what we can try to do here. Uh, we will see what we can try to do. Why you have to go? I don't know. Isolated queen pawns. That is the position of the moment. Huh. It's a little strange. Yeah. It wasn't an ideal, wasn't an ideal decision by him. Now I have a couple of options. Hmm.
We'll let them take and free our back rank if they wish to do so, but they do not wish to do so. So now we'll play a3. Maybe prepare to uh, to take, to play d5 perhaps. And as long as the knight isn't capable of going into, um, as long as the knight isn't capable of going into b4. That was my idea. Anyway, good one? I don't know. It'll remain to be seen, won't it? Remains to be seen if it was a good decision. But now I have troubles defending the d5 pawn. I'm not sure what to do. Play a weird move. Bait them into opening the king. I say them like it's two people over there. It's not two people. It's one dude. One dude, one man, one desire. Whoa, is that good? He says it is. He says it is, so. Try to get as many pieces as I can on this E file here. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm playing bad moves. <gasps> oh. Oh my gosh. Oh. <sighs> it's going to take an epic comeback. Going to take an epic comeback. I'm down two and a half. Just blundered my queen in one move. Not good, man. May not be banging the, Kong, the gong on this one. I got to win. I got to win as black. Or ASMS9699 takes the best of five. We don't want that, do we? We don't want him taking the best of five. By we, I mean me. I do not want that. I could take it too. Nah, we'll let him play g4. We will let him play g4. Weird moves all around. I don't know how I lost that last game. I was just like up a, a straight pawn. <laughs> that was pathetic. Can I just play e3? Should I just take it? I'll just take it. And go get the exchange. How did I lose that last game? It's horrible. Seriously. Hope I don't lose this one. Gosh. What? Uh, no, what am I doing? Oh my god, this is not my day, kids. Not my day. Oh, but he fell for my last trick. Yeah, not over. Not re over. Everybody's sitting there having, just thinking they're the smartest person in the world for the next person who comes up with, you know, the latest way to make fun of my name. <laughs> Everyone's like, yeah, he's gut wrenching to watch, you know, the obvious play on wrench. You know? Wrench is such a tool. Whatever, you know? It's always funny. 
They always get a kick out of it. Well, maybe bishop h4 is the best there. I've played this way before, and I think that bishop h4 after queen e7 is supposed to be my 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 play. But as it is, he's playing horrible moves. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it and hopefully bring this thing to an even two and a half half. What the hell is wrong with me? Seriously. I haven't played this bad in forever. I just like took I, I was just up two pawns for nothing. Now I now I gotta pull it together. Oh my god, no, I'm I'm gonna lose this game. I mean I'm just down a piece now. Oh, I'm so frustrated with myself right now. That was just that was just horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Horrible chess. That's what it was. Oh, that's frustrating. That is really, really frustrating. To just like be totally winning and blunder your piece. And I'm I'm just off today. So alright. It may not be a gong performance, but if it's not, then uh we will just tip our hat to our opponents and do our best next time. Frustrating. Hmm. Oh, what was I doing again? What was I doing again? I had a nice game. I had a nice game. Even being down a piece, I had a nice game. Pathetic. Pathetic today. Sorry, guys. Frustrated with myself right now. In case you can't tell. case you are unable to tell what's going on with me. I'm just a little frustrated with myself, to say the least. You know what I mean? All right. All right, sir. We're going to end this bullet brawl on a down note for the first time in a long time. Tip our hat to ASMS9699 and know that I'm just, you know, a little off today. So, uh... So sometimes you have, sometimes you don't have your best, and um, and you blunder pieces. And I mean, I I was just like losing winning positions in this one. So you just know you don't have it. But all right, gut wrenching. Very good. The trolling stones. It sounds like you're really good at that. No. Uh, all right, everybody. Thank you. Seriously, this is a lot of fun. Once again, subscribe to us on uh, Twitch, which is where you are. Um, follow us on Twitter. And like us on YouTube. Is that, I don't know, I feel like I'm supposed to say that at the end of every video. It's like, you know what, you don't have to do any of that. It's a free world. You don't have to follow us. You don't have to subscribe. You don't have to like anything. You do you, buddy. You be you. Okay? You be you. you just do you. It's hard enough doing you, right? You don't need to worry about anything else. I get it. All right, everybody, seriously. We out. <laughs>